Uh, welcome to the second session of Repository Fringe. Um, I've got a slightly um, hazardous session here since this is being conducted uh, by Skype. Uh, Thomas Gritchell is going to talk about author claim and he's doing it from Novosibirsk. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Thomas Gritchell now. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, good afternoon from Siberia. Um, I'm Thomas Grichel, and my talk today is about IR repository data in author claim. This is joint work with uh, Wolfram Horstmann. I'm going to talk a little bit about our our backgrounds a little further. You know, uh, I'm actually here in my summer home. I normally teach in the, in the Long Island University in New York, but I'm in my summer home in Novosibirsk here, so I'm six hours ahead of you guys. Um, well, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to, to give this presentation, and uh, I also would like to extend my thanks to the people who have been working on the, the, the base system, which is the, the, the source of the data uh, I'm going to be describing today So, on the IR repositories. Um, so I'm going to structure but roughly is that I'm going to have a little bit about the background of the work that we're doing here that's described here. I'm going to talk about the free lib data set and about author claiming and the author claim system, a bit, uh, about the, the base system and its relationship to author claiming and author claim and, and base and institutional repositories within base. So a little bit about background about us. Uh, Wolfram Horstmann, I'm sure some, some of you know it because he's been involved in, in European projects, right? He's currently the chief information officer of a scholarly information at, uh, at Bielefeld University. And um, Bielefeld University have a long tradition of being a, a, a technologically driven um, a university with a, with a technologically driven library. Uh, and, and as part of this tradition, really, they've been running the base search engine since 2004, base standing here for the Bielefeld academic search engine. And it's basically a concern of them, but, but it's been going on for a number of years that they've been pushing forward. And it's, it's work that they're doing that is not immediately dependent on, on any funding source. So it's not really attached to any funded project that they will be starting or finished. They've been working on this for a long time already independently of funded work. A little bit about background about me. Uh, you may have heard my uh, name uh, with, in conjunction with probably what is my main reason for complacency, which is the creation of the Repic Digital Library in the early 1990s, really starting about 1991 and so on. And I've been um, building this through its very, very early stages uh, over the long run. Uh, and it's a long run concern of mine. And uh, so I'm into, you know, building things over the long term, which, you know, in some ways brings me close to the concerns that they have um, in, in Bielefeld, right? And a little bit about, about RAPIC, the motivation there was at the time to make papers freely available. And my inspiration has been the free software movement, you know, which already was was working in the early 1990s, right, and make academic information similarly in, 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 available in similar ways as we can make software freely available, right? So it's both the, the papers themselves, the full text, as well as the structure of information that surrounds the, the creation of this full text, the people who are creating, the writing the full text, as well as the institutions that uh, sustain this process, right? And, and all of this has always been a concern of mine to build something that is long running and doesn't really rely on anything external is hopefully decentralized so that it can perpetuate itself or will at least run in the long run, right? Now, RAPEC is often misunderstood as a repository for economics. A lot of people say, oh, well, economics, the EPIC is the economics repository. It isn't really, right? It is a collection of about, um, in a moment, I think numbers are rising. I think last time I looked at it, it was about 1,350 institutional repositories, right? So they are institutional repositories uh, that are run by institutions. Mainly these institutions are economics departments and research centers uh, that provide research uh, in economics. Uh, and um, of course, since I started this in the 1990s, it really predates um, OAI, right? It's also compared to institutional repositories has a more reduced business model. And the, uh, the, the, the repositories that you know, constitute the REPEC uh, digital library really are uh, interoperable in a more tightly way than you would do in an, in an institutional repository, since an you know, institutional repository, you know, can, contain, contains um, 
uh, things that may be of a disparate nature where you can't interoperate them as easily as in the REPIC system, right? So REPIC overall is, is, is considered a success and, and you know, the, uh, there's a lot of reasons for why this is a, a success, right? Uh, one is the business case, I mean, the, the way it's built, but then there's also some, some technical matters that make REPIC a success and, and both of them can in some ways be, be linked, right? They're linked together, you know, right? So in terms of the business case, really, we're trying to, you know, to decentralize as much as we can uh, our operation. Um, we, 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 the, the centralized service really rely on voluntary, volunteer power mainly. Um, the, the institutional depositories, of course, may be run by people who do this as part of their jobs, but uh, the overall coordination really is, is, is done by volunteers. And, 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 and we encourage the reuse of REPIC data. So this is something we're concerned with trying to aggressively, you know, push out our, uh, our, the data that we have collected. So we, because we believe that this is in the best interest of the people who maintain these repositories. Right. Uh, technically, uh, the technical success uh, in REPIC, I think really comes from showing that it works for the office and the institutions. And, and in order to, to do that, we first have to register the, 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 the office. And that's what we've been doing in the REPEC offer service. Uh, and that's related to the offer claim service that I'm going to be uh, talking about, right? We're also registering institutions, right? And then we are providing evaluative data for offers and institutions. And this evaluative data is taken pretty seriously within the, the, the profession these days. Uh, I can give some, some anecdotal evidence of this, but uh, it's been maybe a success, right? Okay, so what's the relationship between uh, REPIC and institutional repositories? Well, really, REPIC is not a repository, right? So really, um, it's, you can think about it as a bibliographic layer over repositories, where the term bibliographic probably is a little bit taken a large term because we're not only talking about the description of documents, but also about the surrounding reality. And I think the surrounding reality is possibly more important, right? And institution, institutional repositories will really benefit, I think, from a similar layer constructed around them, right? A free bibliographic layer uh, that, that will uh, um, uh, place the repository context into, uh, contents into a greater context, right? And again, what do, I think is the, what do I think is the requirement for such a layer? Again, you know, it shouldn't be dependent on some external fund that it can't be run on, you know, the usual just funded projects. Uh, uh, it's got to be freely reusable instantaneously. And I think there will be some, some people who are going to be the proponent of, you know, open bibliographic data. It's precisely uh, that sort of uh, data that I'm talking about, the freely reusable. So it is in, in some ways open, right? And in, in some ways it must be there for, for the long run, right? And in principle, this, this just relates to also to, to institutional repositories. I mean, institutional repositories really are there for the long run. And I think, you know, it's the right way to proceed. And that's why I think we're all sitting in the same boat in some ways, right? So in some ways, what we want to be constructing and what I've been thinking about and working on, you know, slowly is some sort of, it's the start of a REPEC really for all disciplines, right? So I'm, I'm talking about a free lib project, which basically is going to be, you know, a, a centrally a set of bibliographic data for, uh, research papers or research documents, right? So, uh, and then a, a, a claiming service where one can claim, authors can claim these, these documents. And there's also a um, institutional registration service, which in REPEC is IDIRC, uh, which in, uh, in, in, in the inter, in, inter, interdisciplinary uh, uh, situation will be something called ARIF, which stands for the Academic and Research Institutions in the World. I'm, I'm not going to talk about this simply for constraints of time. It will be a topic for another day. Okay. So let's briefly look about, uh, talk about Freelib. So basically, it's an initial attempt, really, at buying, a, a building an aggregate of freely available bibliographic data, right? So it's not necessarily openly available in the sense that there is some agreed reusability um, uh, uh, statement coming with it, right? It's just simply, you know, out there, right? Um, it's a project basically from the society, the Open Library Society, which is a society I created to support this work. And it's sponsored by the um, Open Knowledge Foundation who are actually providing the, the server where the data lies, right? Um, it's about 35 million records. Um, 
at the moment from the usual suspects, right? So it's PubMed, uh, Open Library, DBLP, Repec, and, and, and some others, which you, you, can, you can have a look at the Philip website, philip.org, and, and you see what's actually available, right? And the, the, the data elements in Freelib are really very simple. At this time, it's really, you know, the, the, the title, the, the, what I gave is a title for a paper, right? Or for name expressions, so who wrote the papers, right? These are not really authors, but names, like name expressions for them. And then some link to where the provider has further information about it, and then some sort of identifier that makes this record uh, available in the long run and identifiable, right? And, and, and really, the, the reason why we're doing this, well, uh, first of all, this, these are factual data, so we do, we're not really constrained by copyright issues over these data. And secondly, this data really is meant to serve an author claiming uh, procedure, and this author claiming procedure actually can uh, uh, operate with that sort of simple data. It doesn't really need any further data such as subject classifications or abstract or anything, right? So, uh, for since about 2008, right, building an, an, an authorship claiming service that is, you know, produces instantly uh, freely available and reusable information, uh, and it lives at authorclaim.org, right? Um, so it runs on the same software as the Repic Author Service, and that software is also freely available. Um, um, a little bit of background about author claiming. I mean, author claiming is really something I first started um, the, with the author service about 1999. Uh, uh, I think I was the first one to actually set this up, right? So it's the idea that an author can come to, an, to, a, to a website and register claims in, uh, on, these, on, on, these, on, these, on these works, right? Uh, but then there have been the others coming along, right? So the Institute of Scientific Information I created researcher ID um, uh, archive have a system, right? Uh, the, the NIH are working on something. Google Scholar um, are, are doing something at this. So this has really become a crowded field. And on top of this, there is an initiative that looks into author identification, right? Now, author identification is somewhat broader than author claiming. It's more difficult to understand what author identification actually is. I don't want to go into all of this, these, these details here, but yeah. author claiming really isn't the same thing as author identification, right? So the, and the difference, I, I call that Klink's problem. Klink's problem basically is, you know, is that you know a person can claim to be an author of a paper, but there are several authors, and we don't know what author that person was, right? So, assumingly, Jane and John Smith wrote a paper together, right? And the author list says J. Smith and J. Smith, and we don't know if Jane or John were the first authors. Now, you may say this is not something that is all that um, uh, that, that relevant in practice, since we can always some make some sort of um, regular expression matching. And in fact, yes, it's true, we can mostly deal with this, but there is a theoretical difference. And uh, I think this, this is one of the, 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 the issues that, you know, I believe clouds the whole issue of author identification and makes it difficult to understand what it actually is, even for people who have been working on this for a while, right? But let's turn to, to author claim data. The actual author claim data lives on FTP server, FTP author claim org. It's available there. It has explicit license uh, in, in CC0. So you can take that data and, you know, uh, and, and use it, right? And an example data is here's, here's a data structure, basically. I mean, this is XML data. I'm, I'm not showing an XML file. It would take too much space here. Um, but the structure is that there is an identifier, right? There are name variations of the person. And then there is the, the papers that the person has claimed are his and the person, the paper, the, the paper he claimed were not his, right? So the, the, the papers that he has refused. Now, you may say, Thomas, what's the point of having the data about the refused papers? Well, it's actually very important to have those because we can build computer learning models, right? Knowing which uh, papers that the person has refused will, will be able to allow us to, to distinguish job builder from somebody else who is also called job builder but has done different work, right? And for that, we use uh, uh, computer learning and actually works quite successfully and it's actually built into the operations of author claim itself, right? I'm gonna spare you technical, technical details, right? So how, does, so how should author identification really uh, work? Generally, author identification is difficult to perform in institutional repositories because they're just simply too large to do it by uh, institutional repository staff, right? staff, right? So staff can't really, can't, can't really do it very easily. 
uh, usually we require a registration of contributors or at least some sort of depositor, right? Um, and I believe that is going to be continuing uh, to, to be the case. And institutional depositors are also too small really to make it meaningful for authors to claim papers directly in them, right? And there is a way when you can say, okay, you know, we could have, you know, author claiming in each in each institutional repository with each or generally with each publisher out there, publishing in the sense of making uh, uh, work public and then uh, have some sort of other layer that will actually unite these different claims. I think this is possibly where ORCID is going to be going towards. Uh, still, I believe, you know, doing it for all, all of these different publishers separately is going to be uh, problematic for authors to do, right? So what is the benefit of author claiming for an institutional repository? Well, if your papers have been claimed in author claim, you can get that data and then you can build a, a, an, an author page for your institutional repository and that author page can be completely automated, right? So you can, you can, you can look up from the identifiers that you're getting from author claim, which are your internal papers and you can link to them directly. And for the others, you have a link to an external service that is going to be linking to an external service and then, then, then people can from there go to an external service and actually, and actually uh, uh, re reach the paper there, right? And, 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 and your authors are going to see, well, for certain papers, I have more data available, I have abstracts and ab subject classification and so on. Well, that's the paper that are in the institutional repositories. Uh, so you have an incentive for people to actually, to actually deposit more and make this, to make this complete, right? Okay, to get this done in practical terms, what does that mean? Well, like, all we have to do is to harvest all the, harvest all the institutional repositories and make them available in author claim. It's not easy, not easily to be done because there are already 2,000 uh, institutional repositories. Therefore, to do this, I've been looking for a partner and the, the partner found is base, right? So we need some sort of a centralized collection for this material so that I can get it from via that centralized collection and BASE is already doing this, this, this particular job. So BASE can really deliver all this, this, this data to offer claim and they have started to do so, right? So basically what they are doing is they're monitoring the OEI PMH world, right? Uh, they configure, you know, the harvesting for each um, uh, repository, right? And they, they provide metadata stores, both for the raw data, mainly OEIDC, and for some normalized data that they're producing out of these, these data um, uh, be using some sort of matching to an internal metadata format, right? And so we, we need for certain things, you know, because the heterogeneous these in OIDC, right? There's some cleaning that they're doing for type, state, language, right? And, and also they provide some subject classifications, right? Uh, they provide search services for this, right? Uh, an API you know, for, for index by use, uh, by third parties and so on. Um, uh, there is a repository profile service. These are the, I use those directly for the claim in order to get profiles of repositories, right? And there is a, a access store for the raw metadata. Um, I'm not sure if there is something. I think it's being in process of being built uh, for the data that has been normalized, right? And they did a specific uh, asking for me to put uh, things into the Freelib collection and then later into all for claim. And that's what is currently happening at this time, right? Remember that for to have P uh, uh, things in Freelib, I need basically have, I need to have these four elements, right? I need to have the all for the title, link and the identifier, right? Um, it's okay, it generally the author and the title are easy to find. Uh, the identifier we can construct by some sort of grandfathering procedure, uh, but it's a it's, um, bit more difficult because the identifier can be put into different places. The real problem is the link, right? So I need to have some sort of link for a web page that gives me further information about that item. There's no OIDC field for that, and you know, there's a lot of ways in which different repositories are actually going about this. Base have have um, uh, uh, done this. Uh, they have united these and, and link and, and have a specific field for this that I that I actually use and that they're exporting to me. Right. Um, I then I also use the repository profile to do some exclusion of some repositories which I think do have material. With all due respect, I don't really need uh, in 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 author claim at least not with priority. Right. So. Works for students, I, I usually, in a thesis and dissertations, digitized old material, no pharaoh is going to come and claim his writings. Um, uh, 
uh, link collection, uh, which, you know, the authorship is a problematic thing and, and primary search data, obviously authorship of primary search data isn't at this time as something that people are going to be claiming, although in principle, you know, author claim can be extended to, you know, editorships and, you know, guess, hunter and gather of data ship and so on. It is in principle extensible, right? Uh, there's some minor manual exclusions. For example, I exclude UK PubMed Central because it's already in PubMed, right? So this is... Okay. My results so far, uh, I have about 19, uh, 13... Um, what are 1930 repositories, 1930 repositories. I just did a count today, there are about 12 million records in there. Um, from an earlier set that I got from, from them, which uh, did the, it was the records, some repositories and driver, I have about 535, 34 records already claimed in the system, which I then, I changed the identifier to go to the new collection. I have some documentation about what is available, right? Uh, which is in and that um, that 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 URL that needs a little bit of debugging uh, and and watching and everything is all right, but in principle, you know, most of the information is is there. Uh, and th th if you're looking at author claim, author claim actually doesn't announce this collection as being there because it's still being read. I am not sure uh, how long it's going to take. I've, for this presentation, I actually hope to have most of the UK um, archives read. Uh, I haven't done that. I've, I've, and I've, I'm reading at the moment a subset that is from the UK. I mean, UCL, for example, the other day I've seen, I've seen uh, Biomed Central and so on. So for those, for those um, that are in the UK, they're already already there and, and they're, they're, they're available. But, but as it takes, you know, to 12, to read the 12 million records will actually take me uh, some more time, at least in, in possibly a few weeks, right? If you want to have more uh, information about this, you know, just simply contact us, especially if you want to be, you know, working with the base material, you know, I, I encourage you to, to, to talk to, to Wolfram and, and talk to me if you want to be, you know, harvesting and using um, information from, um, from all for claim uh, and, and build them into your repositories. I'd be, I'd be happy to, to, to check this out, how this, how this works, right? Um, I think this brings me to the end, right? Now, are there any questions? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Do we want to try and do questions? Uh, if we I do, I have clapping, to take I mean, them it's in. okay to be sitting here and, uh, you know, not having people stare at you when, when, when those uh, well, feel more relaxed, could, really. Maybe yeah. we could have one question. Yes. Okay. Hi, Thomas. Uh, yes, you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Just, just shout, Peter. <coughs> shout. Uh, hello, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this is Peter Murray Rust, and I congratulate you for what you've done here. I think it's oh. tremendous. Uh, I would first of all like to say that the key Peter thing Murray for Rust. repositories, I think, is to create this bibliographic overlay. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, it's impossible to search, uh, say, repositories in the UK. We desperately need a bibliographic overlay. I'm just going to ask one question. You've got 1,900 repositories there. Uh, have these all been done by you? Uh, the, the analysis of the um, uh, API, such as it is, or have you found this out to volunteers? all that has been done by you if you found this. Uh, actually, I'm not providing search services for repositories, right? Base provides search services for repositories, right? I'm providing, uh, I'm not directly providing, search, I mean, I'm working on a search services, so search service for author, uh, for authors, and that's a, 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 a project called Author Profile, in which I, I talked at the Orchid meeting in, in, in Boston in, in, in in June. Uh, it's a different type of approach. There I'm going to be looking at, you know, searching for authors and bringing their works together and, and linking between identified authors and author name expressions. So I'm actually not, uh, not, doing, not doing searching at this time. 
right? I believe that, you know, we don't really need all that much in terms of searching if we have Google, right? What we need to do is we need to do more um, to have elements in repositories be more broadly visible in search engine, including Google. And one of the ways to do that is particularly if you think about the page rank uh, uh, algorithm that, that search engines use. It, it, it's to make the work more linked. That means bringing in more links to these items that are in repositories, right? So, you know, an author profile that is used in a third party application will create inbound links to the, to the element, contra contrary to something what a search engine will do, which create a one off, you know, pointer to it in a, in a web page that has been generated by the search engine, right? So it creates a link to it. And, and these links will push the, uh, the thing that the, the, the documents in repositories up the search engine ladder, right? So I'm not particularly doing search engine at this time, but I mean, you know, I'm, I think we need to be all working together on different things, right? I mean, I'm gonna try to get this to run and this is going to be taking me uh, probably uh, some time to do and probably busy me until the end of my, my, my working life. Um, and I'm, I'm sure other people are going to be working on search engines, and that's going to keep them busy. But what we need is we need to be working together. I'm not sure if this is, I'm not sure if this is what you wanted to ask. Great. Then. Okay. okay. Okay, that's it. Yes. Well, have a good day in, in Edinburgh, right? I'm going to go off to the beach. <laughs>